Hey guys, welcome to Pellets and Pits. Hey, today is all about a Weber 22 inch hack that I absolutely swear by. I've been doing this method for roughly 20 years. Not only do we show you the hack, we actually cook with the hack. We're doing a chuck roast, like a brisket. If you guys wanna see what I think might be considered the best hack of all time, here we go. All right, here we go. Let's get started. I personally believe that this might be the best Weber kettle 22 inch hack of all time. Uh, roughly 12 to 14 years now going on this hack. Um, I kind of came up with it myself and somebody else came up with it in the past. Amen to them. I haven't seen it. I've tried to research it. Maybe my research is bad. I swear by this. If you guys don't know that on our original channel, the Flat Top King, before that even started, we actually started off with the Charcoal King because I love cooking with charcoal and cast iron. Not only that, <laughs> the ironic thing is, here we are sitting with a pellet dominated channel, and there's the shirt. All right, so this is all right, so now that's out of the way. My love for the Weber kettle started when I was growing up. My dad had one, um, taught me how to cook on a very um, young age, although he burned a ton of stuff. The technology and the information, I would say the information from YouTube and how to was not available yet because the internet hadn't even started, right? So even dealing with TMG pits down the road that builds those custom pits, um, the crazy offsets and all that stuff, when it really comes down to it, when they have that charcoal bed with a log on it, it just, the flavors are just something I can't get away from. So with this being said, today is all about a hack. It does not matter what meat of choice you use. When I had my last uh, 22 inch, it was the performer, which had the side table. And the reason why we bought this grill is because we want to match this with our Weber Summit charcoal grill. That is the same grill as what is now known as the Weber Kamado. I didn't name it, they did. We're gonna do similarities between the both. I'm looking forward to that series. This is all about the hack. I'm gonna get the meat seasoned and ready to go and then we'll go over to the, the kettle and show you what I found is the best hack I have ever seen or ever witnessed or ever been a part of when it comes to the 22 inch. Chuck roast, why? It's gonna take a little time to cook. We're probably looking at maybe five to seven hours. I think that's a good time to illustrate what this hack can do. Um, if you want to do ribs, obviously that's fine. Brisket, we've done briskets on there before. Uh, we can do a lot of things on there. We made you'll a see fantastic it. brisket on it yesterday. So I'm just doing a mustard binder because I like it. Today we're going to keep it simple. We're not going to overthink things. Today is more about the hack. A um, little W sauce. Our little uh, all-purpose rub that's found on pellets and pits. It's simple, you can make it at home, which is why we use it so often. Obviously, you're gonna hit those sides. Without further ado, I'm not gonna waste your time. Here it is. I've mentioned several times before, especially when the searwood came out and it had that rotisserie option, how much I love the rotisserie. I'm reshooting this whole segment because yesterday when I filmed it while cooking the beef, I had mentioned that you can use another grate and I was trying to emulate what that would look like instead we just X the video. I went out yesterday and bought another grate so I can show you firsthand why I'm so excited about this. So here we go. So this is the hack. This right here is your rotisserie attachment, okay? And you're thinking, why in the world does that matter? I have screwed four holes. This is actually my dad's and he's done it now and he loves it. So you take four holes and put some, um, bolts, washers, screws, whatever you want to in there. The, the whole point is this is what holds your rack up. So you want to make sure it's level. The biggest complaint I see with a 22 inch Weber kettle, and I completely agree. Once you learn your two zone system, regardless how you do it, the slow and sear, your baskets, um, snake method, um, lump method, where you just put it over to the side and let it go. You don't have a lot of space. It's hard to get your food off of the heat, right? With this, now you elevate it. So you take those screws, you raise your grate, and there you go. Right there is how I do probably 75 to 85% of my cooks. Everything from brisket, ribs, pork butt, you name it. This is how I do it. There's a song about that. What I didn't do yesterday is I didn't have that second grate because it only comes with one grate. And I thought instead of me trying to show you and move stuff around, this is what we're gonna do. So. You take your spacer off, you put this grate inside. I always have this side of the grate folded up. You get the rotisserie attachment. There's plenty of options. We can have a link available uh, 
down in the description. I'll just link to the exact one from Weber, and then you guys can find the knockoff, so you can find the real one. It doesn't matter. Uh, the biggest thing is getting a spacer. So you can put a pan down there with water. You can put a pan down there to catch the trimmings. You can do a lot of things with it. So there is the first grate. Then you put your rotisserie attachment on it. Typically when I'm cooking, I cook like this. I throw that side up. Now all of a sudden, if I'm adding lump charcoal, if I'm adding wood chunks, if I'm adding anything, then it's easy access. I'm gonna give you measurements. So now all of a sudden, that gives you about a seven inch gap in between each one. And it gives you about a 12 inch gap from your coals to the top of your grate on the top grate. You could put, uh, you could take this off if you wanted to. Wherever this goes, you could put uh, chicken legs, chicken thighs, chicken breasts. You can put anything you want to down there. You can put another brisket if you wanted to. Put two briskets on top. I think this is the greatest hack. I'm trying to explain it why, because I, I truly swear by it. You have to learn your fire management. It's a little bit different because air does seep out through the sides. You're going to lose some smoke. Air will seep out through here, through your uh, rotisserie pole. But once you dealt, nail down how much fire you need, it's almost like working an offset. You can laugh all you want to, but it's that fine tuning of how big your coal bed is versus how much wood chunks you put in there versus lump charcoal. You'll be amazed how little you can actually get away with. Um, and then one other system I wanted to show you, and I just want to reiterate that it truly doesn't matter if you use the basket system, you can use a slow and sear, like I mentioned, the real big one. Um, what I do, I just call it the lazy man method. Uh, even when I started, I throw a cube down, start it. We can show you that. And also like the lazy man snake method where I just kind of guess, put the charcoal to the side and let it eat. This is how I grew up. This is, uh, so the rotisserie attachment and four screws. screws. You if just you want, use like a regular drill and just. Yeah, metal drill, just go right through it, attach the screws, and then all of a sudden you've got yourself easily one of the best backyard systems you could possibly have. I would call this a lazy man's chimney. Uh, this is actually how I start a ton of my fires in my kettle. Um, the reason why. It's like this because you don't want all your charcoal lit at one time. I think that's the biggest mistake that I see beginners make is they have too much fire going at one time and it's hard to regulate the temp. So I just mound up the coals, get my wax cube going. That's gonna start this little batch of charcoal and then we can feed it fresh charcoal. So honestly, when you come to this system, the coals are, it does not matter. It doesn't matter what method you use. You notice that all the coals aren't lit. I put some unlit coals right there. It'll naturally feed over. To that, I love my post oak or hickory chunks. Yeah, that looks good enough. Golly, that's a big one. Put a couple on the fire. Put your system on. Lit it. And now what we're looking to do is adjust our fire. I'm pretty uh, familiar with it. So I'm going to come down to about a little bit of hair before that notch right there. And then up here, I'm just gonna crease it just a little bit. It's about right there. I mean, we could run 275 to 300, we could run 225, just depends on how long you want it to be on there. The temps don't matter, you can adjust them you know, with your uh, vents, that's gas and brake. But you see that you do have some of the loss, that's fine, that's part of it. I think by now it's safe to say, and I just use those holes uh, as portholes for my um, thermometer, so you don't have to break the seal of your kettle. But uh, I think everybody can agree by now that a two zone system is like the perfect kettle setup. I hear you. All right, just using my fancy dancy Therm Pro TP27. I've had this joker, I don't know, at least four years now, three years at least. And there we go. Thunder and lightning. Oh! Ah. We sell it at about 280. I'm going inside. Alrighty, we're still held around 240. Uh, right there, our lid says it's about 255, somewhere through there. So it gives you an idea of the temperature gauges. So the storm has moved past us. Um, 
I thought it had. Spoke too soon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Literally, we could not have timed that better. We we averaged roughly 280, uh, basically for the first two and a half hours. I did let that charcoal kind of like dissipate, added a chunk of wood, and then I got some lump charcoal. Like I said, whatever temperature you want to hit, that's up to you. It's really not going to matter. We're, I'm just worried about the beef. So you see right here, we're still smoking. Um, it's probably hard to get a, uh, a camera in there. I've just got a large chunk of wood and I've got a large chunk of lump charcoal in there. It's keeping us around 250. The biggest thing to do is uh, start with a small fire. All my dampers are com completely closed. They've been closed the whole time and we ran like 280. I did start off with a bigger fire. It's just one of those things where you just gotta learn as you go. But uh, you can see right now we're you know we're hanging close to about what what I say two forty. We've been at two forty for quite a bit of time. So just want to keep give you guys an update. All right, so we're hitting about one eighty three for internal. Smoked beef tallow, move it on the bottom, move it on top. Give it a tight wrap. All right, I came so close to 210, but my temperature's dropping. My guess is we're probably right out of fuel, which is probably the perfect time. So uh, we're just gonna pull this, let it rest, probably about an hour. I'm gonna let it rest at least like 160 degrees, something like that. We'll come back out and slice it to show you. Just like that, about an hour and a half later, we've let it rest. So the idea is a chuck roast like a brisket. Ooh. Good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm telling you right now, the answer is yes. <laughs> it's gonna be good, we know already. I can you can feel it? You can. It smells amazing. It smells like brisket. It does. And what it take us uh it took us six hours. It took us six hours of smoke, it took us about an hour and a half to once we wrapped to come up to temp uh, about that 209 temp that you guys saw and then we let it rest for an hour and a half so there you go <laughs> oh. oh it has good flavor mm. when you get the bites of fat I like beef gold <laughs> i do like this more than i do uh the tri tip oh for sure mm. so this could be a good like practice for people that have never done brisket you don't want to spend 80 bucks for a brisket. Just get a little chuck roast and try it. All right, guys, there you go. Like I said, this has nothing to do with your hack. Yep, with the hack. Look at that ring on there. It's good. I know that. Here, give me a piece with no fat. All right, guys, there you go. So there's my hack. Mm -hmm. Dipping it in tallow is definitely the way to go. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, that piece is good. Mm. Oh, dude. <laughs> super, super oh, good. Dude. Mm. You think you don't like chuck roast? This ain't your mama's pot roast. You know, this doesn't taste like chuck roast. Mm -mm. No. It doesn't taste like brisket, but it doesn't taste like ch uh, chuck roast. Mm -hmm. That's good. <laughs> oh, boy, look at my hand. You're going to tell them we're just down to Domino's pizzas watching a movie. <laughs> I can't stop eating it. It's good. This is my third time trying to sign off. There you go. It there is, is. It is so good. <laughs> All right, guys, for the fourth time. There's the hack of the year. Appreciate you guys. Uh, tell me what you think. If you guys tried it, if you guys interested in trying it, like I said, we'll have the link to the uh, the actual Weber uh, spacer, the rotisserie option in the link below, but you guys can check out Amazon or wherever you want to get it from. The ability to get the food off the heat is what matters. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. <laughs> mm. It's so good. It, it, is, it is so good.